Today's video is sponsored by Tecovis Boots. So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. I'm down here at the cabin this morning. This is day two. I spent the night last night. If I told you I had a great night's sleep, I would be lying. I would. I mean, it was plenty quiet and plenty dark, but I had this cot that just was not comfortable at all. And normally, like when I'm at home, I'll go to bed, and however I position myself to go to sleep, I wake up in the morning like that. I mean, I can go to sleep three or four minutes. Last night, that was not the case. Uh, it got cold, but I had a good sleeping bag. It got down to about 37 this morning, but I just could not get comfortable on that cot. Uh, normally, I like to lay on my side. The only way it would work is if I would lay flat on my back. So next time, I think I'm going to go the air mattress route. We'll have to see, but... Uh, once I went to sleep, after about two or three hours, I was out like a light. And I woke up. You definitely don't need an alarm clock because you could see just a little bit of light outside. And uh, I think I got up about 6.15, ran to town, got some breakfast, got some fuel in the truck. And I came back here and I'm putting up some more tongue and groove. I had a few deer stop by last night. I got some video from the trail camera. Uh, they walked right through here. They were a little more cautious than what they normally are, but like with the truck here and the mini skid and the four-wheeler, they're just kind of looking around, but they didn't seem to care too much. Later on this morning, I'm going to take the mini skid with the uh, Vernig brush cutter, and we're going to cut some more trails back there in the woods. And I got a few more things to do back there. Then we'll come back put up some more tongue and groove and then I have to go back tonight but you know there's a couple things that I've learned so far the first thing that I have learned is three days and two nights would be a good amount of time to come down here to get something done now don't get me wrong I'm not in a hurry I'm kind of half on vacation and half getting some things done I really enjoy it here but like tonight I have to go back I've got a bunch of stuff going on tomorrow so yesterday, you have about four hours wrapped up and getting loaded up and getting down here. And today, I'll have the same thing getting home tonight. So I think the best thing to do would be stay a minimum of three days and two nights. That way, you have at least one full day, daylight to dark, to uh, you know get some things done and enjoy yourself down here. The other thing that I learned is this. The biggest challenge in putting up this tongue and groove is not the actual install itself. I got some more done upstairs and I am uh, working on the ceiling here downstairs. It goes up super easy. It really does. But my biggest challenge is just working around all the wood that I have. I didn't think that through enough uh, when I brought it down here. I was kind of in a hurry getting it all unloaded and I should have staged it. A little bit better if you had a big area it wouldn't be a big deal uh, but yeah I've just been kind of working around the wood I do a little bit upstairs come down here I think I'm gonna do some more of the ceiling till this gets in the way I may do that wall over there this wall over here I can do all the way over just past the window but on that side uh, I need to do a little a little wiring I have a plug on the outside of the cabin if I wanted to set a generator out there or a power bank I need to put one on the inside as well so I don't have anything to do that with today yeah because I'd like to just be able to set a power bank there by the steps that would run the whole cabin but the panel is right up top of the steps there so I can't go any further than that down there and over on this side here, on that side of the window, is where the wood stove is going to go. And the hallway to the shower house is going to start at this stud right here. To this stud right here. 
So this will be a hallway going over to the shower house. This little bit of wood that it's going to take, I'm just going to go over top of it for now. We may not even get to that till spring. Uh, so I'm not worried about that, but the wood stove is going to sit somewhere right in here. So I need to figure that all out. somewhere yeah there's some yellow ribbon my buddy Tim put that up got a tree stand down in here I'm gonna mow a path to it and kind of clean up some shooting lanes around it a little bit it's one thing nice about that mini skid I can get you know just snake right down through here no problem at all Earlier, I mentioned that today's video was sponsored by Tecovis Boots. Check these out. They're beautiful. You know, with every pair of Tecovis Boots, you can expect premium quality and timeless Western style. These are handmade boots, and they do so with over 200 individual steps using premium bovine and exotic leathers. 
And I can tell you these boots are comfortable on day one. Tecovis is known for using broken in leathers, so you don't have to worry about a break in period or uncomfortable boots. If you ever have a chance to visit one of their stores, you can enjoy complimentary drinks, get a free boot shine, and get the perfect fit from one of their expert staff members. Tecovis also offers complimentary branding and leather stamping if you want to personalize your boots or fine leather goods. Bottom line is this, I love my Tecovis boots and boy, I wish you could smell that. And if you don't believe me, look at some of the comments from the last video that I showed these Tecovis boots. There are tons of people that like them just as much as I do. Click on my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to get your new favorite pair of boots today. All right, I got down here to that tree stand. I'm not going to mow all this. I don't want to do that. Uh, but I'm going to just mow a couple little trails in here, a couple little shooting lanes. But this is where you transition from the red pine up there. That's normally what you see when I'm down here at the cabin. But then down here is all the white pine. And I mean, it stays dark in there. If you want sunlight, you almost got to carry it in there because uh, it stays dark. But this is a great spot. I hunted out of this stand a little bit last year, saw tons of deer. And it's just nice to come down here and uh, just see what you see. I think I've mentioned this before, uh, but this property was all farm field, probably in the 40s. And then they planted all that white pine and they planted the red pine. Right where we're at was kind of a break in between the two. And you can see there's some hardwoods that grew up in here. I think the plan back then, I don't know. I wasn't around then, but when they planted all these red pine everywhere, they should have come in. I think the plan was to do a thinning and nobody ever did anything with them. But this is cutter is 48 inches and coming down through there i would say some of those trees are 49 inches apart i could barely fit through there this is a really nice spot back here we originally thought of putting the cabin like way back in here it'd be a real long driveway to get back here but you know i'm about 300 feet from the road where the cabin is and i just kind of wanted to leave this all alone at some point, I don't know when, I'll have to uh, figure it out, but the red pine definitely needs a thinning. They won't last forever. Uh, we have some that are dying now. They're just too close together, but I need to get someone in here or rent the right piece of equipment to take out literally a couple hundred trees. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. I'm not too worried about it right now. Eventually, the whole property will probably be taken over by the white pines. They regenerate where the red pines don't on their own. And even some of the neighboring properties down here, there's a bunch of white pine growing all over it just from the white pine on this property here. So just something I got in the back of my head, or if I ever find a market, you know, like a log home builder or something like that, uh, I'd like to get a couple hundred of these cut and cleaned up i'd have to come in and clean it up afterwards but they don't leave that much of a mess they're just tall straight trees with a few branches up at the top so it's not like you're taking down a big hardwood you know big oak tree with a huge canopy that you have a big mess to clean up afterwards but i don't know it's always in the back of my mind now. i've got to figure something out for all these trees
so this is like the main trail coming out through the property the trees are a little farther apart here and i got that trail mowed down and around that tree stand and i got another one up there about 100 yards I'm trying to pick a good spot here it's got a real big white pine it's down up there i think something doesn't look quite right oh yeah the tops out of it we'll go check that out when we get up there Somewhere up here, I saw it once, I can't find it again. There it is. There's that other tree stand. It's up there about another 50 yards, 40 yards. But I find that uh, big white pine. The whole top is out of it. This is where I can use that, uh, that log grapple. See this tree right here? That's probably 26, 28 inches in diameter. That's just the top right there. It's a white pine. You can see it broke off, but I mean, there's two 12 foot logs right there. I could easily drop this tree and pull it right out with that mini skid and that log grapple no trouble at all can snake right in here with it can you imagine being back in here when that hit the ground we did have some uh pretty strong wind storms i'm guessing that's what did it but yeah i'll have to get this one out of here this fall Put a lot of lumber in that tree right there a lot At least two 12 footers and an eight.
right, I'm loading up here. I'm not leaving for a little while yet, but I wanted to get the uh, trailer all loaded up, ready to go. Because when I'm done, I'll have to gather up all my tools in the cabin. And uh, it takes a while. You know what I mean? By the time you load everything up, probably got an, at least an hour wrapped up in just that. So every time I'm down here at the cabin and I do a video about it, there's always comments uh, from people thinking that we are in Virginia. We are not. We are in West Virginia. There's a big difference. I prefer West Virginia. Nothing wrong with Virginia, but uh, I just like this state. I used to work down here years ago in different areas on some big road jobs. I worked at some power plants and I always thought it was pretty country and things are pretty spread out down here. There's not not a lot of people crammed into a small area and you know it got me thinking i was thinking about this last night when i was in my uh, cot and i couldn't sleep at home you know where we live we're one of the last holdouts up there and there's housing plans all over the place and if you go on those i've talked about this before like those community facebook pages all everybody does is complain about everything and they're just they just seem angry and not happy with where they live. I like where we live. Um, I do prefer coming down here, though. I do. There's nothing wrong with where we live. And we have a nice piece of property and all that. But I prefer West Virginia. And I'm surprised. shouldn't even say this, but I'm surprised more people haven't figured it out. Uh, you know, up home, there's some really nice houses. I mean... An average home, like a new home that's built up by where we live, is probably seven, maybe eight hundred thousand dollars. You know, for a nice place. And there's people that spend, you know, a hundred thousand dollars on a kitchen. And people always ask about this property and how much it costs and everything. It's just under forty acres here, and so far, all in. I mean, everything. The buying the property the cabin everything that i've spent down here so far uh equipment rentals all the stone for the driveway i'm probably all in for about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars so far so let's say that ends up being 240 for 40 acres in this nice cabin and like i said i can't believe more people haven't figured it out up our way you know, there's a five-acre lot for sale down the road from us for one hundred and seventy thousand or one hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy thousand dollars. And if you have to live close to where you work, I get it. But a lot of these people, you know, they live in these really nice houses, but they all seem to just want to get out and go somewhere else. I was talking to someone the other day about the whole pickleball craze. Up home, all the new plans, that's their selling point, is that they have pickleball courts. And it seems like it would be fun. I don't know. I was always big into table tennis. It's just a much larger version. But we are talking about it and couldn't understand the attraction. These people go crazy over it. And I said, it's like this. All these people build these nice big houses, but they're jammed in a housing plan. And, you know, you can go sit on your back patio, but you're looking at the guy sitting on his back patio in your backyard and then there's someone over to your right someone over to your left and i think people just want to get out and do something and i think the pickleball thing's probably a good thing for them but the money that they spend up there and what they could have somewhere else is uh is mind-blowing it is this piece of property at home 40 acres it's a million dollars easy just for the property yeah and like i said i'm all in probably for 240 when it's all said and done is what i'll have in this whole thing and property taxes aren't bad down here at all compared to at home so it's one of the many reasons i love west virginia uh, and that's just part of it you know you just feel i do anyway i just feel more free down here you can kind of do what you want nobody bothers you and uh that's what i like but anyway i think that's about it for today's video i've been rambling on long enough i appreciate y'all being here and i will catch you on the next one